I'm Ronnie Ward from the Ditmas section of the Flatbush neighborhood, Brooklyn, and the city of New York. It's Saturday, the 6th day of April, 2024. Um, it's a commentary from the Epic Times. in Nebraska. A senator has just flipped party affiliation going from Democrat to Republican. This change, it gives the Republicans a filibuster-proof supermajority that they are now looking to use in order to change the way that the state doles out electoral college votes, and in so doing, they might actually swing the results of the 2024 presidential election. Although, let me back up for a quick moment in order to explain both how as well as why. To start with, there are two unique, you can say, political quirks over in Nebraska that are relevant to our discussion today. The first is the fact that Nebraska is the only state in the nation that has a unicameral legislature, right. meaning That's right. that unlike every other state in the country that has a state assembly and a state senate, Nebraska has only one. They have a unified legislature with one single chamber consisting of 49 senators. And, as you would imagine, Nebraska is a conservative stronghold, with most of the senators being Republicans. In fact, right after the 2022 midterms, the Republicans, they held 32 out of 49 seats. However, as of two days ago, that number actually changed. That's because on Wednesday of this week, Nebraska State Senator Michael McDonnell, he switched party affiliation and he went from being a Democrat to instead being a registered Republican. In explaining why exactly he made the change, he cited his Catholic faith and the fact that he was being punished for his pro-life views. Quote, Michael McDonald, a 40-year Democrat, ran for the legislature in 2016 in South Omaha as a Catholic who openly opposes abortion. He said the Nebraska Democratic Party no longer felt like a place where he could reconcile his faith with his political affiliation. He said that he had asked fellow Democrats to respect his religious-based pro-life position and that they had instead sought in recent months to punish him. The county party withdrew its support of him and the state party's leading committee censured him. And indeed, because of his pro-life views, Mr. McDonald's local county-level Democrat party, they voted to not seat him as a delegate, as well as to not share their party resources with him. And then furthermore, the state-level Democrat party, they voted to censure him for his pro-life views. And so, because of all this, he decided to switch party affiliations and added the following in a public statement when doing so. Quote, when I ran for re-election in 2020, I was pro-life. I have asked the Democratic Party to respect my religious-based pro-life position. Instead, over the last year, they have decided to punish me for being pro-life. Being a Christian member of the Roman Catholic Church and pro-life is more important to me than being a registered Democrat. And this is where... Th it's politics. I don't care if your hair is green and they don't like green hair. I don't care if you're an abolitionist. I don't care if you're a slave promoter. I don't care if you're Black Lives Matter. I don't care if you're an atheist, anarchist. I don't care what you are. Pro-life, anti-life, euthanasia, pro-whatever, food stamps, no food. I don't know. To, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's not punishment. It's politics. Period. It's politics. Anything goes in politics. It's the body politic. We, anything goes, it's a political party, they have a right, it's my party and I cry if I want to, cry if I want to, if it's up to me, I'm happy to you, oh, 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 oh. yeah, it, it, yeah, they get to do what they want. They don't have to have any reason. They could have ten reasons. It doesn't matter. Racism. We don't like white people. We don't like Hindus, Christians. I don't care what it is. It's a political party. It doesn't matter. Because you can primary. There's, it's a party. Having your name on the ballot is not controlled by the party. It's controlled by the state. It is, and that's reviewable by the federal government. Having your name on a, access to a ballot has rules. It does. It's not my problem or your problem if somebody doesn't anticipate politically that a position they might take 
might cause them to lose the nomination or something. Well, they plan ahead. They can, they, ignorance or not knowing the rules doesn't give any excuses. It's politics. We cannot go down this road at all. I don't know what they're going to say here. It's not punishment. It's politics only. I don't care what it is. I don't like handicapped people. I don't like non-English speakers. I don't. I only want. Um, I only want Hindus. I don't. What? I mean, only women. Only women that's been married or a single. I, I. It doesn't matter. It's the party. If you don't like the people that run the party, there's a process to change them as well. There is in every state. On a regular basis, they have a public a public process that determines who is control of, of the party in that locale, whatever it is. There is a public process. There is in every state. Plan ahead, folks. Don't be crying punishment. Don't be crying. Don't cry. Don't, you know, no, it's politics. In business, they say, caveat emptor, the buyer beware. There's one thing you can count on in politics. It's dirty. It's backstabbing. It's trite, contrary, glorious, wonderful, whatever, all at the same time. <laughs> I've never met a politician who doesn't stretch the truth or flat out lie because it's the process we have. It's better than going down a road, start saying punishment. And that, well, then, well, this is the punishment for that. And then retribution. No, there is a public process to change all of it. You have to plan ahead. Many people do over long periods of time to move the dial. They do. Things get very interesting. Because with this senator flipping party affiliation, the Republicans now hold 33 Senate seats. And the reason that this number is so significant is because in Nebraska, you need 33 votes to overcome a filibuster, which the Republicans now have. Meaning, in practical terms, that if all Republican senators get on board with a certain bill, they can now push that bill through the state legislature, even if every single Democrat opposes it. And a lot That's politics it's called a supermajority whatever it is uh, that's the rules that's in the constitution of the state that I, if you don't like the constitutional rules or you don't like the laws then you got to work to change things you have to you got you got to i mean come on yeah what's the choice here i mean what else are we going to do anarchy disruptors no it's politics. you got to make an issue in the next election. Or if you have a legal argument, you take it to the Supreme Court of that state. You do. You do. But I want to tell you, that's a well-kept secret. Yeah, well, in Article 1 of the United States Constitution, I think, Section 4, there's a phrase. It says, the state shall choose the, the primary of check selecting electors or something. Unless Congress determines otherwise, meaning any day, yes, not yesterday, today, tomorrow, you could have Congress vote a bill out and the president sign it. They could change the entire process for how all electors are charging, how districts are drawn for the whole country. The whole thing, ballots, they could say, no more congressional elections on the same ballot as a state, period. Pick their own, whatever they want, period. It's in the Constitution. They've not used it in all these years since September 17, 1789. They've never done it. They haven't. They could, though. It's in, Congress can fix it. They can. Whatever they want to do, they can. It's my party and I cry if I want to, cry if I want to, boo hoo hoo. That line, the governor of Nebraska, Mr. Jim Pillen, he's a Republican, he urged the state legislature to immediately begin work on changing the electoral college voting system in the state of Nebraska. Because you see, this is the second political quirk. 
I just went over this. He can because Congress has not exercised its constitutional authority to preempt states from doing this. They have not. They could at any, they could do it today if you had them, if you could get the votes. Sure, and Biden signs it. You could. Within the state, they are one of only two states that are not a winner take all system. Alongside the state of Maine, Nebraska assigns their electoral college votes based on the popular vote in each congressional district. And so what this means in practice is that typically the Republican candidate gets four of the electoral college votes while the Democrat candidate gets one. That's exactly what happened in the year 2020. Nebraska, overall, they voted 58 percent for Trump and 39 percent for Joe Biden. But because of Nebraska's unique system, Trump only got four of the electoral college votes and Biden got one because they were split along congressional districts. However, this is the exact system that Nebraska Republicans are trying to change. Specifically, Senator Lauren Lippincott introduced a legislative bill. It's legislative bill number 764. You can see it up on your screen. And it would reinstate a winner-take-all system in the state of Nebraska. Effectively, with the passage of this bill, it will give Trump another guaranteed electoral college vote in the upcoming 2024 election. And three days ago... the. There's no such thing as a guaranteed anything. We don't even know if Donald Trump's going to be on a ballot. (laughs) They haven't had the convention yet. Tis, 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 tis. Alarmist. Alarmist. We don't know if Joseph Robinette Biden's going to be the... Not until the convention. Till the gavel goes down. Bang! The nominee for the office of the president... Whatever. Then it's official. Nothing's official till then. All this voting, these delegates, that's all a straw poll. They convene. The first thing they do at convention is certify every delegate there. The credentials committee. Deter- they, just, they look at every person that's coming. Are you here? Are you right? Credentials committee. There's challenges. Et cetera, et cetera. They do all that. Then they get a rules committee, and then they do that, and then they do the, oh, all this stuff, and that's right. They just, whatever they want to do, they're not bound to do anything. No, then they do the rules. The rules of this convention are, there is nobody, and we're all going to duke it out, what, whatever the rules are. They determine the rules for that convention when the convention starts. The only thing they don't do is the location of the convention, it was determined by the last convention. Yeah. I hate to burst your bubbles, everybody, but this delegate, all this stuff, it, it's a great show. It is. It's important. Debate, conversation. That's why Nikki Haley's such a hero. She stayed in and kept staying because she knows. She's smart. She knows one thing, to keep the conversation going. That's why she stayed in, because it was her civic responsibility she takes it seriously. She does. She's a hero. She's a woman. She stuck it out. She stayed in. No matter what, all those people, even people withdrawing money, she did. She's a hero as far as I'm concerned. And what would it be? What kind of Do you think this thing's good with Biden? Just whatever? No. Gosh, of course not. Competition. Hey, it's important governor of nebraska he came out in support of the bill saying that he will sign it as soon as it hits his desk quote i am a strong supporter of senator lippincott's winner take all bill and have been from the start it will bring nebraska into line with 48 of our fellow states better reflect the founder's intent and ensure our it doesn't matter what he said today or yesterday he could change his mind in five minutes and say well i've reconsidered what i just said in this thing yesterday and i don't believe that anymore and i've changed my mind it don't matter until he votes or whatever. State speaks with one unified voice in presidential elections. I call upon fellow Republicans in the legislature to pass this bill to my desk so I can sign it into law. Now, at this point, you might be asking yourself, what is exactly the big deal here? I mean, after all, this is just one single electoral college vote doesn't seem like that big of a deal on the surface. However, that's not how surrogates for the Biden campaign see it, because the most recent polling that's come out has Trump leading Biden in. He said how surrogates for the Biden campaign, meaning 
not Joseph Biden, the President of the United States. He's not expressing an opinion on any of this. It doesn't matter what his surrogate says. It only matters what the President of the United States says. Six out of the seven swing states. As you can see up on your screen, this poll from the Wall Street Journal asked voters who they would pick if the election were held today. And the results are Arizona plus five Trump, Georgia. If it's held today, well, it's tomorrow. Well, it's a different day. Yeah. Plus one Trump, Michigan plus three Trump, North Carolina plus six Trump, Nevada plus four Trump, Pennsylvania plus three Trump, and Wisconsin was tied. And so, based on the calculations coming out of the Biden campaign, their best chance of victory right now has them winning the Electoral College by just a single vote. And so, flipping Nebraska is a major deal for them. In fact, just listen to how it was laid out over on MSNBC two days ago. For a second, because there's a little buzzing about certain about Nebraska right now. The governor there has thrown his support behind an effort that would no longer allocate the electoral votes by congressional district. Because right now, it's five votes there. Technically, yeah. Republicans get four, and President Biden, Democrats get the one from Omaha. That's right. If that changes, and we don't know that it will, the state legislature is going to look at it. But if that changes... That's what all these people do is what they're doing right here. Speculation, speculation, if and then, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're called pundits. Whatever. Their opinion doesn't matter. This is all they live for. If they don't talk like this, they don't have a job. That takes away Biden's best path to win. Because if you get, if he wins, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, yeah. but loses the other swing states <laughs> yeah, and no longer that. picks up the one in Nebraska... 269. Uh, that leads playbook this morning. The alarm among Democrats that this is possible. What do you think? I think this is what the modern Republican Party has become. They're now changing the rules in the middle, trying to benefit themselves. This is the, the hell that Donald Trump hath wrought uh, in the middle of this. Changing the rules 200 days before the election is ridiculous. I think you're right. I think there are real uh, simulation problems. When you look at the map. Simulation problems. Whatever. The rules are you get to change the rules. That's it. That is the rules. That one electoral vote really matters in the combination of other things. Then you need another state. Um, and so the easiest pathway to victory has always been the Midwestern three states combined with Nebraska. Now, of course, the idea that changing election laws last minute is an exclusively Republican activity is factually inaccurate. Over the past three election cycles, Democrat legislatures across the whole country have changed a plethora of laws relating to mail-in ballots, ballot harvesting, voter ID, and so on. But that's besides the point. The main point is that, as innocuous as it seems, there is a chance that this one electoral college vote over in Nebraska might be the deciding factor in the upcoming 2024 election. And so, whether Nebraska may... Does that mean it's the... <laughs> is it the... Uh, is it the X factor? The factor? No. There's no causal, there's no cause and effect relationship. There can't. It's too complex. That's right. This change suddenly becomes an important issue to the whole nation. However, never underestimate the ability of Republicans to be able to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Because despite them having a filibuster-proof supermajority in the state legislature, as well as a governor who is chomping at the bit to make this change and to sign it into law, it's actually still uncertain whether it's going to go through or not. Quote, early Wednesday, Senator Lippincott said he likely lacked the five votes to get LB-764 out of the Government, Military, and Veteran Affairs Committee as a standalone bill. The committee chair briefly scheduled... There you go. It's a complex process, I'm telling you. ...an executive session of the committee to vote on Thursday on whether LB-764 would advance to the floor. He canceled the planned vote after a series of unfriendly amendments were added to that bill and to other potential vehicles for the change. Senator Lippincott also confirmed that by attaching these other proposals to the legislation, only 31 Senate Republicans are in support. That's two votes short of the 33 needed. Meaning, in plain English, that the bill had a bunch of random amendments added into it last minute, which is causing members of the... Not random. Just amendments. Whatever they are. They're not random. Whatever. The chairman of the committee did what he's entitled or she's entitled to do. If they set the agenda, they do the... That's the, that's, that's the myriad of the details of the infinitesimally seeming unimportant thing, but the people who are being counters and professionals at this know how this works 
They do know. It's how it's always worked. Just like this. Republican caucus to not support it. Furthermore, even without these amendments, it's not exactly clear whether State Senator Michael McDonnell, the one who just switched party affiliations from Democrat to Republican, will actually be supportive of a winner-take-all system. In the past, he, when he was a Democrat, he did vote against it. And so the point here is that changing Nebraska system is possible, but it's not certain. In fact, just as an aside, another Republican state senator, she tried to force the issue on the floor just two days ago on Wednesday, but she was shut down on technical grounds, on procedural mm. grounds. However, before she was shut down, she managed to say the following on the floor, quote, Senate Republicans want to energize voters and donors with the issue. They want to talk the talk, but not walk the walk. And so if in the coming days there are going to be any serious developments in this particular case, I'll let you know right away. Until then, if you'd like to go through anything that we discussed in today's episode, I'll throw all my research notes. You'll be able to find them down in the description box below. Again, that link is right there at the top of the description box below. I hope you check it out. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. And most importantly, stay free. There we go. That's it.